Good morning, friends and members of the Epworth family. I'm so glad you could join us today for worship on this beautiful almost summer day, June 14th. It's Flag Day in our country, the United States, and we are thankful for all uh, that flag stands for and the freedoms that we have, and one of them is to be able to worship freely, so we are grateful for that. We're glad that you could be here today, a very special service uh, that we have. Uh, great music coming up uh, with the Children's Choir, Jackson County Children's Choir, and of course with uh, John and Joyce. So be ready to be blessed today. Also, next week is going to be a, a great, uh, important weekend in the life of our church. Hope you have your uh, bulletin um, notes printed. You get those in the email, and if you're not getting them, ask uh, Paula here at the church to send that to you. But some important announcements. Saturday from 6 to 6.30, we're having a parade for our graduates. So we're just going to drive by. The details are here. Um, we're going to just drive by and shout out and honk and uh, wave at our graduates who will be here in front of the church. So uh, let's support them. Let's come out. Just stay in our cars. We'll be safe and, and do that. Also, next Sunday is Father's Day, and we're going to celebrate our fathers much like we did with our mothers, and the youth will help participate in that service. I'll be bringing the message, but they will be alongside me in the service. Thank you for filling out your surveys. Those help me uh, know where we are as a church and how many would come once we reopen. And I'm thankful we haven't done that yet because uh, it's um, not totally safe yet, and we see Five counties in West Virginia where there's been outbreaks through churches. So we, we never want that to happen here. When we do it, we're going to make sure it is safe and it's going to be meaningful worship. I have to thank the Memorial Committee for giving some money to help us to get the sanitizing supplies that we need. Also, plexiglass. We're going to have to have plexiglass um, shields up here at the lectern and pulpit. And uh, Del Lahan graciously has offered... Uh, to install those for us. So we're working hard to get to that point uh, in July. Uh, also, uh, not in your bulletin, but uh, we've sent out an email. Uh, we're putting together a work team to help with some Jackson County families in need uh, with part of Brothers Keepers. Their groups couldn't come because of COVID-19. If you'd like to be a part of a work team for an evening or a Saturday uh, to help put in ramps or repairs for those in need, please let us know here at the church. I, I need to know who can do it, how many we have, and what skill levels we have. That will determine our project. So we're excited we can be out there in mission and share the love of Christ right here in our county. So, uh, if you'll look on your uh, announcements there, today is Annabelle Jones's birthday. A shout out to Annabelle. Happy birthday. And I think it's time to worship. Let's, let's worship our good and glorious and gracious God. And don't we all need a closer walk with him? Here's John and Joyce to lead us in our first hymn. Good morning. Great to be with you again. Let's sing Just a Closer Walk with Thee. Walk with thee. 
thankful that you desire that closer walk. We desire, Lord, a closer walk with you, to see you, to hear you, to feel you, to love you, and to follow you. Oh God, we pray for your Holy Spirit to come upon us. Help us, Lord, to experience your grace and become greater disciples as we give you the praise and honor you are so worthy of through Jesus Christ, your Son and our Savior. Amen. I invite you to open your Bible or follow along on the screen with our Old Testament lesson that comes from Psalm 37, verses 1 through 6. Do not fret because of the wicked. Do not be envious of wrongdoers, for they will soon fade like the grass and wither like the green herb. Trust in the Lord and do good, so you will live in the land and enjoy security. Take delight in the Lord, and he will give you the desires of your heart. Commit your way to the Lord, trust in him, and he will act. He will make your vindication shine like the light and the justice of your cause like the noonday. Now turn with me into the New Testament. Our epistle lesson uh, is the letter to the Romans by the Apostle Paul, the 12th chapter, verses 9 through 21. Let love be genuine. Hate what is evil. Hold fast to what is good. Love one another with mutual affection. Outdo one another in showing honor. Do not lag in zeal. Be ardent in spirit. Serve the Lord. Rejoice in hope. Be patient in suffering. Persevere in prayer. Contribute to the needs of the saints. Extend hospitality to strangers. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse them. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Weep with those who weep. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be haughty, but associate with the lowly. Do not claim to be wiser than you are. Do not repay anyone evil for evil, but take thought for what is noble in the sight of all. If it is possible, so far as it depends on you, live peaceably with all. Beloved, never avenge yourselves, but leave room for the wrath of God, for it is written, vengeance is mine, I will repay, says the Lord. No, if your enemies are hungry, feed them. If they are thirsty, give them something to drink, for by doing this you will heap burning coals on their heads. Do not be overcome by evil 
but overcome evil with good. May God bless unto you the reading of his word. And now be blessed as Miss Paula comes back and meets with us and our children. Good morning, boys and girls. I hope everyone's had a great week this week and enjoyed the warm weather we've had and played outside and had a good week. Well, today we're going to talk about rainbows. Who likes rainbows? I do, and I bet your hand went up as well. Everybody loves a rainbow. Rainbows are just beautiful after a storm. And, you know, when you see them, you just think of wonderful things and you just get warm and fuzzy all inside because the rainbow just, met, you just know that that's a promise from God. Well, that's what we're going to talk about today, God's promises. And, you know, the Bible says, whenever the rainbow appears in the clouds, I will see it and remember the everlasting covenant between God and all living creatures of every kind on the earth. Well, did you know that a rainbow is a promise of, from God? Did you know that the Bible begins with a rainbow and it ends with a rainbow? Well, in the book of Genesis, it says, the rainbow of God's promise shines across the world. And in the book of Revelation, it says, the emerald rainbow shines around the throne of God in heaven. A very long time ago, God could only find one person he could trust. And that was Noah. You know Noah. You know the story. So God asked Noah to build a large boat. And you know what they called that. They called it the ark. And so Noah put his family and two of every kind of bird and animal on the earth. Then God sent rain. Do you remember how many days and how many nights? Forty days and forty nights until the earth was covered with water. And then there was a great flood, and all the people and animals outside that went on the boat, they drowned, even the birds. But after the water dried up, Noah build, built an altar, and he worshiped God. And God spoke to Noah and his sons. God promised that the earth and everything living on it would never again be destroyed by the flood. We see this story as evidence of one more time of grace and goodness of God, and you know God makes promises and he keeps them. And God gave us something to remind us of that promise, a rainbow. A rainbow is an arch that reaches across the sky and it's filled with beautiful colors. It's usually seen in the sky at the end of a shower, a rain shower, or a storm. I'm sure that your mommies and daddies have said to you when the sun was shining and it was raining outside, to watch for a rainbow. Because of this, God said every time we see a rainbow, it would remind us of a promise never to flood the whole world again and remind us of his love for us. Do you know what this color in the rainbow means? Well, I found something that might explain it just a little bit better to you. And each, the colors of the rainbow are red, orange, yellow, green, blue, and purple. And every now and then we have to include the color black because that's the storms and when it gets real dreary and yucky looking outside. But then there's that beautiful ray of pink that comes and those beautiful white clouds. So I'm going to tell you what each color of the rainbow means. Red represents the blood Jesus shed for you and for me. Yellow is for God's perfect light, the sun that shines so bright. Orange is coming from the night into life with through Jesus. Green reminds us that God created the earth and the trees like the grass in the spring. It represents the new life we have in Jesus. Blue represents the color of water. God created the oceans and the seas. And this reminds us of the baptism that identifies us with Jesus. Black, it represents our sins and God's darkest days. Purple is for Jesus the hours of sorrow so we can gain the crown of life and pink it's for our new tomorrow and white represents God's purity and those beautiful white fluffy clouds we see in the sky and the cleansing of our sins through God's grace rainbows appear after mighty storms when things look their worst just when the sky is the darkest 
Out of the heaven, a rainbow appears. God first sent the rainbow to Noah as a sign that his word is true. The rainbow's message still speaks to me and to you every day. The rainbow is a sign of God's promise that he will guide us through any storm that comes our way. When you feel like you're having a really bad day and life just throws you storms and you're filled, filled with doubt, just remember God's rainbow is coming and he'll be there for you no matter what. Good, bad, ugly, God is always there. He loves you more than life itself. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it and look for the rainbow because that is God's promise that he loves us and he loves us so so much all right let's say a little prayer this morning bow your head dear heavenly father thank you for your rainbow and for the promises you make with each color help us to remember that you love us and will see us through each storm amen all right, you have a great week. And remember, I love you and God loves you. I'll see you next time. Bye. Thank you, Miss Paula, for that great lesson on the rainbows and all that it can teach us and remind us anytime we see them. Today, we want to celebrate with the Buskirk family. They have a new baby in their family, Casper. He came early and Because of that, they're keeping him in the hospital for a while. So we want to pray that he'll uh, continue to uh, grow and thrive and come home soon. So we congratulate Courtney and Franklin uh, and uh, Claudia on the new member of their family. We do have a a lot to pray about this morning. Um, We have some very heavy needs of family members from our church family to members in our family. And, of course, Jim Frazier is is at the top of our list right now because he's in critical condition in the ICU in Charleston. And he's recovering from surgery because he had a bleed. And so it's very uh, serious uh, uh, neuro condition that he needs God's blessing and healing. So pray for him Uh, throughout the day. Let us continue to pray for Jim and Jenny and the family. Also, Doreen uh, Knopp is in ICU also in Charleston, uh, has pneumonia and some other lung issues as she's been going through chemo. Uh, It's very difficult for families because they can't see uh, their loved ones. Uh, But we pray for God's healing and strength uh, to be with her as well and be with the Knopp family. Also, the Felties uh, need your prayers because of uh, Rod's father, Arthur. He's holding his own right now in uh, Pennsylvania in a hospital there. Uh, They brought uh, some of their family members back from Ireland, uh, and they're going to be visiting with them for a while. That's good news, but they need to go back to Pennsylvania to uh, take care of Arthur Felty, who came through the uh, hip surgery but has some complications, and part of that's just being his age, and we pray that he will uh, get better and heal as well. Russ Brown's having some back problems, uh, may have an MRI soon and and, uh, perhaps surgery. We pray for Patty Snyder and her recovery, and Harvey Mitchell also recovering with therapy. And we certainly need to pray for our nation. Wow, you, you think it's bad and it just seems to get worse what took place in Atlanta uh, last night we need to pray for everyone our law enforcement people what a difficult time for them Uh, give them wisdom and and strength and and how to deal with these uh, almost impossible issues and then uh, others on the other side that are uh, been wounded and and uh, lives lost uh, because of abuse and uh, racism that's going on in our country. Uh, It's going to take a miracle of God. Nothing uh, less than that is going to heal our land and help us to find answers. Pray for our Mayor Rader. She's uh, trying to uh, help our community to continue to thrive and working hard to to have the parade and... and, uh, Uh, activities and and yet keep us safe Uh, all of our leaders right now it's a very difficult time dealing with COVID and 
and the other protests in our country and, and issues. So we ask for God's help and guidance for our leaders right now. So we need to go to the Lord because he's the only one that can provide the answers and give us the courage and wisdom that we need. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we are thankful that we have you always, that you're not surprised by all of these things uh, that are happening. We know uh, sin reigns uh, in our world. It even has a foothold in our hearts too many times. Even sins that we're not aware of um, because of our backgrounds, uh, because of the culture. And, oh God, we just need your mercy. We need your grace and we need your healing. Thank you, oh God, that you have provided the answer for us in your son Jesus who gave himself for sin, who sacrificed himself for us, and he gives us hope beyond sin and even the grave through his resurrection. And we're thankful, oh God, that we're not just left with a list of things to do, commands to follow, but you grant us yourself through the Holy Spirit. Oh God, fill us, root out any sin in our lives and fill us with that amazing grace, that love, sacrificial love, to love those who are not like us, to love even our enemies, to build the bridges of reconciliation and to see all people through your eyes, the ones for whom Jesus died. We're thankful, oh God, that you're a healing God. And oh God, how we need your healing power right now and your strength and help and recovery for Jim and Doreen and Arthur. We're thankful for the new life of Casper and pray you'll help him to thrive and get healthy and get home soon. Be with Russ and Patty and Harvey as they recover. And Lord, we have a lot on our prayer list to others that uh, we lift up to you. You know the need. And you know our need. Lord, we come with needs today. Some of us are just struggling because uh, of the situations we're in. There's just so much chaos in our lives and uncertainty, uh, restrictions and fears. We need your help. We need your peace. We need your presence. We need your love. Come, we pray. Fill us and guide us and help us to be the church, the church that's the salt and light that this world needs. Move among us, teach us, and empower us, we pray. All through Jesus, who gave himself for us, in his mighty and matchless name, we pray. Amen.
Amen. Thank you, John, for that. How inspiring. And I hope it inspires you to, to love God more and to give of yourself unto God more. And thank you for how you're doing that through your gifts, returning to God his tithe and, and your offering to the Lord. You can see on your screen how you can give and be a part of what God is doing through God's church. You can mail it in, drop it off, or uh, so many of you are doing it electronically now, and you go to our website there and just click donate. And so let us continue to honor Christ and be a part of what Christ is doing through our gifts. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Oh God, we praise you with all that we are and all that we have. And may this portion of our lives, these gifts, represent our commitment to you and our gratitude to be a part of what you're doing in the world through your church. Thy kingdom come and your will be done through these gifts and through us as we give unto you in Jesus' name. Amen. If you'll join me now in looking at the scriptures one more time, we have a gospel lesson today from Matthew chapter 26, verses um, 14 through 16. You may think this is a kind of a strange scripture today to be reading, but I think as you'll listen to the message, you'll see that this is very pertinent to what's going on in our world today. Then one of the twelve, who was called Judas Iscariot, went to the chief priests and said, What will you give me if I betray him to you? They paid him 30 pieces of silver. And from that moment, he began to look for an opportunity to betray him. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. And now let us worship with special music uh, from the Baileys and the Jackson County Choir, Children's Choir.
Thank you for that beautiful song on dreams as we look at God's dream for us. Let us pray. Oh Lord, we're thankful that you do give us dreams. Dreams of heaven, dreams of the kingdom, dreams of what life might be when your kingdom comes into us and through us. Speak to us, we pray, through these words of Scripture and our thoughts and words together. And we ask that, O oh God, through the one who is the Word that was made flesh. Amen. In his book, When God Whispers Your Name, Max Licato wants us to imagine what it would be like to be a contestant in the greatest game show ever. And the prize is $10 million. Think about it. What would you do if you had $10 million? You could do a lot of that with your family. You could do things for the church or the community. It's all yours if you answer this one question, what is your price the host of the show says you have to agree to only one condition and you'll receive all $10 million. And here are the choices you get to choose from. There are nine of them. The first is put your children up for adoption. Number two, become a prostitute for a week. Number three, give up your American citizenship. Number four, abandon your church. Number five, abandon your family. Number six, kill a stranger. Number seven, have a sex change operation. Number eight, leave your spouse. And number nine, change your race. Now that's the list that was given. And not to choose is to for forfeit the prize. Now how would you choose? I don't know. But I can tell you how your neighbors chose in a national survey. According to the survey, 7% would murder, 6% would change their race, 4% would change their race. Um, let's see, 4% would change their sex, 6% change their race, and for $10 million, 25% would abandon their families, 25% abandon their church, 23% be a prostitute for a week, 16% would give up their citizenship, 16% would leave their spouse, and 3% would put their children up for adoption. Now, even more revealing than this is that nearly two-thirds of those surveyed picked at least one of those choices. And several picked multiple choices. It is clear that the majority would not have left the stage empty-handed. So what would you do? What price are you willing to pay for what you want? Well, you say to me, well, this isn't real. That's not a real survey. Uh, real options in life. I'd never do any of those things. But you have the chance to make similar choices. People do it all the time, every day. Similar choices for something that they dream of. What they would give up for what they dream. Some are willing to give up their families, give up their reputations, even give up God for something that they want. A whole lot less than $10 million. And isn't that what Judas did? Look at Judas. He sold out Jesus for a mere 30 pieces of silver. That's just one month's wages, one month of income. He sells out the Messiah and the Savior of the world. That's not a whole lot of money to sell out someone so significant as Jesus. And so how did Judas to get to the point 
where he could sell out his master and friend and even his dreams, million dreams of a better tomorrow. You see, he began following Jesus because it looked like Jesus was the fulfillment of his dreams. This young rabbi who promised uh, the kingdom that would bring justice and freedom to the people uh, of uh, Israel, the Jewish people. And if anyone could identify with what is going on today in our nation, with all of the protests against abuse and racism, it was the Jewish people under Roman occupation and oppression. The Romans were brutal. They had their knees on the necks of the Jewish people They would arrest them if they even looked at them the wrong way. They would beat them. Uh, The Jews were seen as an inferior race. The Romans imposed extreme taxes upon them to keep the Jewish people poor so that they could live in luxury. Any talk of freedom or rebellion was quashed immediately with crucifixion. That was the lynching of that day. So no wonder there's violent acts against the Romans by rebel groups like the Zealots. Like Judas, they all dreamed of the freedom to worship God and serve him without fear, to live in peace and to prosper. Isn't that all of our dreams? When Judas heard this young rabbi from Galilee speaking of God's kingdom coming with justice and peace, his heart resonated with a vision, a vision that Jesus laid out in Matthew chapter 5 in what we call the Sermon on the Mount, a vision of blessing where the poor are given the kingdom of heaven. The mourning are comforted, the, the meek inheriting the earth, the hungry fed, the merciful shown mercy. The pure in heart seeing God. The peacemakers becoming sons and daughters of God. And the persecuted rewarded with the kingdom of heaven. These were the things that Judas dreamed about. And it appeared that this rabbi was the one who could make it all happen. But something went wrong along the way. Instead of supporting Jesus... The religious leaders turned against him. And when Jesus started to talk strangely, Judas wondered even more. He said strange things like the Son of Man must suffer and be arrested and killed and then rise again. Jesus said he did not come to be served but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. And then he said if you want to save your life, you must lose it. If you want to be first, you must be last. Uh, That's counterintuitive to everything we know in the world, isn't it? That's strange, especially for someone who is going to be king and overthrow the Romans. Could Judas have been mistaken about Jesus? Well, we know even John the Baptist wondered at one point, He sent his disciples and asked the question to Jesus, are you the Messiah or should we look for someone else? Because Jesus wasn't meeting their expectations, their dreams. It became clear that Jesus' dreams for the kingdom were different from Judas's. Judas saw no merit in going to a cross and dying as a martyr. Plenty of people had done that and their dreams had died with them. Jesus really missed his chance, didn't he, on Palm Sunday when he had all the crowds there that he could rally together to revolt against the Romans when they were shouting that messianic uh, praise that came from the Old Testament, Hosanna in the highest, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Judas, he had to take matters into his own hands. Jesus just wasn't doing what he thought. But Judas ends up making the same mistake that King Saul made that we looked at last week, right? That was Saul's mistake because he took matters into his own hands and he lost the favor of God. 
and was disqualified to be king. God removes God's blessing from us whenever we turn our own way and take matters into our own hands. Judas was not about to let his dream slip away. And if Jesus wouldn't take hold of this opportunity, he would. And thus he set into motion the betrayal. Judas, I believe, succumbed to the forces of power and violence. And that's so easily what, what we give into today with such problems that we have. Uh, we just need more power and violence to overcome these uh, injustices that we're looking at. We, we see for Judas, negotiation didn't work. For the Jews, protests weren't working Judas didn't see any merit in loving your enemy and doing good to those who persecute you as Jesus taught. How's that going to bring about the dream against these enemies and injustices? If Jesus is arrested though, and perhaps this might have been a motive for the betrayal, if Jesus is arrested, perhaps, just perhaps, the people will rise up and Try to set him free. Or Jesus might just call down the legions of angels to overcome the enemy. Violence seems like an answer, doesn't it? It seems like an answer even today. Just dominate the enemy. Dominate. That's all we need to do to solve the problems. But the Romans, they couldn't make for peace with domination, could they? And nor could the Jews make for peace with hate and violence. You can never truly have peace and justice by either domination or violence in return. Those are not the things that make for peace. All you get is more hate, more division, and more destruction, and we're seeing that today, aren't we? After decades of oppression, the Jews felt like they had no choice but to rebel, and the Romans responded with a mighty force of power. It was brutal. It was a horrible slaughter. They killed all of the rebels. Um, They destroyed Jerusalem and the temple in 70 A.D., and there was no peace. There was no justice. There was no love. And there was no hope. No hope. Except, except for this same rabbi who was still alive. He had beaten the Roman cross. And his love was winning the day and spreading throughout the Roman Empire. Conquering Romans' kingdom on earth. True peace and true justice, they came. They did come in God's way and in God's time. And that time was almost 300 years, wasn't it? It took almost 300 years of loving the enemy. It took tens of thousands of Christians loving their enemies, sacrificially, being persecuted, not hating in return, to win the Roman Empire, showing kindness to those people who were hurting them. And the Christians conquered the Romans, not by force, not by politics, but by love, loving their enemies in the power of the Holy Spirit. This could not have been done without the Holy Spirit And unless we're filled with the Spirit, we cannot begin to take on these forces of evil and darkness today. The Spirit is the power behind it all. And it is a spirit of love and care. These Christians could love their Roman oppressor so much, especially during the plagues, which really caught the attention of the Romans, that these Christians cared for them, their enemies, Uh, The plagues in Rome, much like our coronavirus today, the plague that we're facing. And, And they had the plague of racism and hatred that they had to overcome as well. 
And the Christians loved them so well and would not return hate for hate that these Romans finally wanted to know who is this God that loves and cares so much for us? And the majority of Romans became Christ followers. It happened. And it can happen again because the Spirit is still that same Spirit of power and love. But let's not be so hard on Judas. Have there not been times when life has not turned out the way that we expected it to be and we've wondered about, God, where are you? What are you doing, God? Why are things not going the way I want them to be? Why are you not blessing my dreams and my efforts? Yes, there have been times when my way has not been God's way and, and, and the same is true for you. Now, it's not that there was perhaps anything inherently wrong with our way or our dreams. There was nothing wrong with Judas's dreams of freedom and justice for his people. But it was his plan done his way and not God's. You see, we, we don't come to God with our dreams first and say, God, here's my dreams, bless them. You help me do what I want to do in life. It's the other way around, isn't it? It's, we come to God and say, Lord, here I am. What is your dream for my life? What would you have me do with my time and my wealth for you? As Psalm 37 says, delight yourself in the Lord first, and God will grant you the dreams or desires of your heart right desires according to your purpose and his will. Isn't that what we pray for every Sunday? Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. I think like Judas, we're, he, he's human. We're, we're human. We're, we can't just be so hard on Judas because it, we're tempted to, to follow Jesus to a reasonable point but when it comes to parting with my dreams and goals, sacrificing what I want in life, that's where I and, and so many people draw the line and they, they leave God, they leave the church. We're all tempted to do that because we think, I know what's best for my life. It's my life. I can do with it whatever I want. Really? Really? <laughs> Is it really your life? Did you create yourself? Did I create myself? Like Judas, if we go on that path, we will miss out on the greater dream, on the greater things that God wants to do. Freedom, justice, peace, goodwill for all people to happen. We will miss that because we cannot produce that. It's only God who can because that's God's dream. That's what the kingdom is all about. You know, we may not think that these problems of racism apply to us. I mean, we're here in Ripley or Jackson County. We don't have racial issues. And, and we forget, though, that injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. Rick Warren, Pastor Rick Warren of Saddleback Church and wrote Purpose Driven Life. We all know Rick Warren, but he says it's a common mistake that we make is that when I don't feel like, uh, the same way you do about a matter or share the same concern you have, I, I think I can just ignore it. I don't, it's none of my business. He goes on to write, for example, if you have been treated unjustly or unfairly for the, if, you, if you've never been treated unjustly or unfairly for the color of your skin, then you're probably having a hard time understanding what people are protesting about because it's not in your world. But just because it's not in your world doesn't make it any less real. It doesn't mean it's not legitimate, and it doesn't mean it doesn't hurt. Instead of getting offended, getting defensive, minimizing it, or changing the subject... 
just absorb their pain for a moment. Just absorb their pain. Don't say anything. Try to be considered of their painful experiences. That is called love. That's called being like Jesus. Isn't that the dream? Isn't that what we say we want to be like? These times will show if that's truly our desire. There's no way we're going to protest our way, dominate our way, legislate our way into peace and justice. It takes relationships. It takes building bridges of understanding and reconciliation in only the church. Only the church, that's you and me, has the power and the love and the courage of Jesus. It's nowhere else. It's in the church. We have the spirit of Jesus who through his own sacrifice, and it means sacrifice, conquered injustice and sin, and he rose again to establish that goodwill and harmony between people of all races and backgrounds and cultures. Our hearts won't change through information or more laws. They can only change through loving relationships. Paul wrote about it. It's worth rereading those verses in, in Romans 12 because that's what it's about. If we can put just those verses into practice because he's writing to these Romans who are being persecuted, who are being abused and executed. And he says, if your enemies are hungry, feed them. If they are thirsty, give them something to drink. For by doing this, you will heap burning coals on their heads. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good, with good. It happens when you put not just a little love in your heart. Remember those songs in the 60s when we were going through the same racial issues. You had what the world needs now is love, sweet love in 1965. Put a little love in your heart in 1968. We need more than that. We need the unquenchable and the unconquerable love of Jesus Christ. Nothing less. If we can't understand why people are protesting in the streets and doing what they're doing, if we can't understand why people are different, then let's listen to them. Let's find out. Let's do what Paul says and Jesus says, bear with them. It is the way of Jesus. It's the way of the early church. It is becoming friends with those who are not like us. But they still are made in the image of Christ, in the image of God. Jesus did that, didn't he? He befriended the disciples, but also the Samaritans. He became their friend. They were enemies. They were a different race. They were hated by the Jews, but they became some of the first Christians in the early church because of what Jesus did. Christians befriended the Romans, people of every culture and every race. And what that means to be a friend is not just an acquaintance. It means really to be a friend like you would do with any other friend. You would have them in your home. You would do things with them. You would show them the kindness of Christ who came not to condemn but to save. And that's our mission, is to help save, to help bridge the gaps through love. If it could happen then, it can happen again. It was far worse in the Roman Empire for those early Christians than what we're facing today. It can happen again in America, but it's only going to happen through you and me if we follow Jesus. So I'm going to ask you, I'm going to challenge you. I'm going to challenge myself to reach out to one new person this week who's different from you, who thinks differently from you. They could be a person of another race. They could be another political party. They could be another uh, religion. They could be from a different socioeconomic background. Someone you would not normally hang around with, but you uh, maybe know they're there in your life somehow and start listening to them. 
develop a friendship with them under God's guidance through prayer. Because you see, if we do nothing here, if we do nothing, all we're doing is allowing the darkness and the divisions and the hatred to grow. We have no choice as a Christ follower. If, you, if you're not a Christian today, you, you can choose to opt out here. We cannot do that if we say Jesus is Lord of our lives. This is who we are as Christ followers. Jesus said, you are the light of the world and the salt of the earth. Be that light and be that salt. Commit to the goal of one person. And if you're willing to do that, I'd I'd like you just to indicate that there on Facebook. Pastor Ford, I'm going to commit to reach out to one person. I'm going to come back next week and and share with you what I did. If we don't commit to doing this, we're not going to do it. We'll put it off and nothing's going to change. Judas could have been all that Jesus Christ wanted him to be and called him to be if he had only pursued God's dream in God's way. Indeed, it is a price worth paying. And the prize? Well, it's eternal. And if we're not willing to pay that price, the price of not doing it is far higher. It will cost us in our society. It will cost our children and our grandchildren with more problems and divisions than we see even today. But if we're willing, if we're willing to commit to follow God's dream in God's way. It not only will change you, but it has the potential to change the world one more time for Christ. May we be that change for his glory and the healing of our land. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we're thankful that you love us in spite of all the ways that we fail you, not only through the things that we have done or we have thought or we have said, but for the things that we have failed to do, to be that salt and light that we need to be, to permeate our society, to permeate families and our community. Lord, we're thankful that you give us the spirit to do that. And we have a have a history to look back on to see how it's done. It is true, it is real, and it can be real again. Lord, help us to be those people today in whom you work and through whom you work. Thy will be done. Your kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. We pray in Jesus' name, amen. Here's a great song by Emerson Fosdeck that speaks to these very issues. Let us sing and pray these words as we continue our service. Save us from weak, sick name.
Thank you for joining us today. I know this is a, a hard message. It's a challenging message, but it, it's a necessary one in these days in which we are living. These are hard and challenging days, but our God is greater, and he has made a way through them, a way to be uh, the answer of bringing the dream of the kingdom once again into our lives and into our communities, into our nation and this world. And so now may God grant you the, the wisdom and the courage to be the faithful follower of him in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. <laughs> 